Welcome back. In this video, we are going to talk about some examples of how to take determinants. I'm going to do a couple with the two by two case and a couple with the three by three case. Um, so let's just go ahead and jump in and get started. And I'll explain what we're doing as we walk through these examples. All right. So in the two by two case of a determinant, um, the the formula is really actually quite easy, or the the process is really quite quite easy. And I'm just going to start with a more generic example just to kind of show generally what this winds up looking like. Um, so this example is going to be W, X, Y, Z, like so. And we are going to take the determinant of this. And when we're working in the two by two case, it's really quite straightforward because all we have to do is look at the diagonals, uh, multiply each diagonal, the entries in each diagonal together, and then take the difference between the two diagonals. So we're gonna start with that W times Z, and then we subtract off from it the product of the other diagonal, X, Y, and that is how you get the determinant in the two by two case. So um, super simple, super straightforward. Uh, let's go ahead and work an example that's got some real numbers in it. So we can do one, two, three, four. And in this case, we're gonna apply the exact same idea here we're gonna look at this first diagonal and take its product. So we get one times four, and then we subtract off from that, the product from the other diagonal, which is that two and the three. So two times three in this case. And um, in this situation, we're able to just go ahead and simplify that down. And you wind up with negative two as being this two by two determinant. So um, for my next one, I wanna do a three by three case, which is a little bit more involved, but it will build on what we just did. Now, there's a lot of different ways that you can do three by three determinants. I'm gonna show you the way that I like to do it, which kind of um, comes from just actually straight from the definition of working with more general determinants, but uh, you don't need to worry too terribly much about the specifics of that when we're working with the three by three case. Um, I'll just walk through it and uh, show you what I get. So in this situation, uh, we'll have four, three, two, one, zero, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four is what we're gonna take the determinant of. And the idea behind taking a three by three determinant is actually going to be to break it down into smaller pieces that are appropriately scaled or multiplied by a number, and then we're gonna add them all back together uh, after we take the determinant of those smaller pieces. And the question then becomes, where do we get those smaller pieces from? Well, what we're actually going to get the smaller pieces from is uh, we're going to kind of base them off of the entries that are in the first row. And I'll just show you how this works, uh, because otherwise I'm going to have to show you a really big, messy formula, and um, it's not super, super helpful necessarily, but uh, we're just going to walk through this process. So what we do is we look at this first entry in the first row, and that's going to be uh, a coefficient on the determinant of everything that is left over when we remove the row and the column that that number is contained in. So in this case, we're gonna take four times the determinant of this smaller piece here, zero, negative one, negative three, negative four. Okay, so now we've taken this and we've considered only this segment. Um, and we're actually gonna repeat this idea for these next two entries that are in the first row here. Um, and we're gonna kind of add them all together and uh, then take these determinants and it'll work out uh, pretty nicely. Um, one thing that I do wanna point out though is that when we're doing this, we actually alternate between adding and subtracting and adding and subtracting and adding and subtracting. So for our next piece here, we're going to subtract off three times the determinants of everything that is left over when we ignore the row and the column that the three is contained in. So in this case, it'll be the uh, determinant of one, negative one, negative two, negative four. Just like that. And then we repeat this process for our third entry up there, that two. And in this situation, now we're going to want to add because again, we're alternating between add, subtract, add, and then if we were to keep going, subtract, add, subtract, so on and so forth. Um, so we get plus two times the determinant of everything that is left over when we ignore the row and the column that that two is contained in. 
Okay. So now basically all we've done is we've taken this larger three by three determinant and broken it down into three smaller two by two determinants, which we already know how to take. So we'll go ahead and take those determinants, making sure to distribute the four, the negative three, and the two appropriately. So we'll have the four. I'm going to open the parentheses for this determinant here. So we get zero times negative four minus negative one, negative three. So this is just from following that same diagonals rule that we did in our last examples. And then we have minus three times the determinant of what's inside of here. So one, negative four, minus negative one, negative two. And then plus two times one, negative three, minus zero times negative two. Um, now, as I'm sure you've noticed, there's a lot of negatives and parentheses floating around. So I just want to encourage you to make sure that you're being really, really careful of keeping track of what gets distributed where and how negatives cancel out and all of that stuff. Um, so at this point, you can actually just throw all of this into your calculator. So your final answer for this determinant will wind up being negative 24. So um, just to kind of recap a little bit, we took each one of these in the first row here multiplied it by the determinant of what gets left behind when we ignore the row and column that that number came from. And then we take those determinants, add them all together, making sure to alternate the sign on each piece. And um, then we get our answer that way. All right, let's, uh, let's walk through another example. <clears throat> so in this one, we will have one, negative one, zero, two, one, three, three, negative one, two. All right, so here we're just gonna apply the exact same idea. We're gonna start with the first entry in the first row. That's gonna be the coefficient on the determinant of everything that gets left behind. So that's gonna be the one, three, negative one, two. And then because we want to alternate between adding and subtracting, I'm gonna take minus, and that's actually independent of what the sign is in that next uh, entry there. So we're still going to have a negative one that we put in as our coefficient on the determinant of what's left over. <clears throat> so that's going to be two, three, three, two, like so. And then we add our third component multiplied by the determinant of what's left over from that. Two, one, three, negative one. Okay. Now all that's left to do is to just take the determinant of each one of these smaller pieces and uh, simplify everything down and we're good to go. So we have one open parentheses for this determinant, one times two minus three times negative one. And then this double negative here, we're gonna get plus one times two times two minus three times three for this one right here. And then this third term, has a zero multiplied by it. And when you're working with determinants, zeros are absolutely your best friend. It does not matter what's inside of here because once we multiply by zero, um, it's just gonna go away. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add zero for that one without even really bothering to compute that little determinant right there. Um, if you were to throw all of this into your calculator, simplify it down, you are going to wind up with zero as your final answer in this case. So um, that's just a few examples of how to work with two by two and three by three determinants. In the next video, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, geometric applications of the determinant. So see you next time.